Hello, welcome to Dungeon Heroes Podcast. I'm your host, Justin. Today we're reviewing uh, the second to last film that uh, Kevin asked us to review for October, which we're doing these early because uh, for Halloween month, we're going to be reviewing a lot of comic books for for the Halloween season. I just want to get uh, you know these over with. So we're reviewing the oh vey. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw uh, cos a cosplay of uh, a female pinhead. It's like oh vey. <laughs> so we have one the la- the second last film that uh, Kevin asked us to review is uh, Hellraiser 1987, which I think first premiered in uh, 1986. It's part of a nine or ten movie franchise. I would have to double check. Though I hear the later movies suck. Uh, I don't know exactly when they stopped being good. Yeah. Um... Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so it's based off... Uh, I I don't know if the book came first or... Clyde Barker just... Uh, oh, it came out in September 11th. So. Wow, what interesting timing. Yeah, so the... Yeah, so the music was by Christopher Young. It was supposed to be by some band called uh, La Coil or some shit. But, like, you know, the, the studio was like, you gotta... You gotta change the music, guy. You gotta change the music, so... Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, so I... This is directed and written by Clyde Barker, right? Who is a gay English horror novelist who did some... Who did some films, right? And, uh, this book... This movie is based off an old urban legend called the... I think it's called the... The, the devil's toy box where it's basically you have this box where if you op- you solve it it's like a puzzle box you solve it uh, weird shit happens so in this film you have this guy named Frank who's played by Sean Chapman who is the degenerate brother of Larry who played by Andrew Robinson who you'll know as Scorpio from Dirty Harry uh, who buy, buys this buys this box from a Chinaman <laughs> who sounds like they just like they just got a guy they somebody dubbed over him and they it was doing like a bad Asian accent because like the actor looked Asian but like you know the accent so- sounded really fake right so he he gets this box right. I, which I think they later called it the Lamont configuration. Here it's just called the box, and he opens it and it summons these demons called the Cenobites, which were the inspiration behind the the inspiration behind the the God Hand from Berserk. If you ever read the manga or watched the anime Berserk, which I highly recommend, but. Uh, Unfortunately, the mangaka died, uh, Kentaro Mira, so R.I.P., right? Uh, so, like, yeah, the the, demon, the demons, the, the Cenobites, right, uh, kill, kill Frank in his old, old family's home, right? And his brother with his wife, Julia, played by Claire Higgins, uh, move in, and his wife Julia, who's British, by the way, uh, had a thing for Frank, right? And uh, one night, while well, sorry, one day when like Larry was bringing it, was uh, moving in some of the stuff, he injures his hand and bleeds on the floor, and that awakens Frank. Uh, Frank gets regenerated, but he's like he's like this corpse, like ghoul thing. And seduces Julia into, like, you know, bringing him victims so he can kill them and absorb their flesh, right? And, uh, you have Ashley Lawrence, who's the daughter uh, of Larry, uh, uh, Christy, who, uh, 
has, hates her mo- stepmother and thinks there's something going on. She, she, uh, she, she gets she gets told to vi- to visit and stumbles upon Julia and Frank and steals the box, the the box, the Lamont configuration or whatever it's called. Opens it and al- almost gets captured by the Xenobites, but makes a deal with them that. She will lead them to Frank, and that's uh, pretty much the story of the film, right? So I don't know. I really enjoyed this film. There's some cool special effects. Um, you have the whole old rotoscoping special effects where they, uh, how they did the lasers where they would draw on the on the frame. So that's cool. You have the cool makeup on the on the monsters, and there's even like you know, uh, cool. There's like this demon looking monster with huge hands and like it's like a it's like a mix between like a scorpion and like a fleshy uh f- fleshy like monster which uh, that was cool the the Cenobites themselves are pretty uh, design wise are pretty cool um they ha- the the movie has this S&M like feel to it right of course <laughs> knowing the you know you know a lot of gay people are this and <laughs> right uh yeah and like the the pinhead character there's a reason why he's like this uh why he's considered like this horror icon because not only the aesthetically does he look cool but he's also very smart and articulate or articulate right uh and it is is very frightening especially when you when you can see what they can do do right so I'm, I'm actually I'm kind of interested in watching some of these uh, late, later on late, later sequels because in the second one uh, I think you get they get, they go to like the the, the home world of the Cenobites and it, get, it has more of like a horror fantasy like you know feel which you know I I think there should be more horror fantasy films right uh, which uh, Clive Barker did do with his. Uh, his film that I think he did after this one, which is Nightbreed, which is kind of like a horror fantasy uh, ver- version of the X Men, which was pretty cool, <laughs> right? Uh, which I was I always meant to fucking read his books, but I, ne- I never did. I, I just got lazy. Uh, the the only book I kind of I I kind of read was Mister Beyond, but it was like I didn't finish the whole thing. One because I was a slow reader and I had to return it to the library. And second, it was like you could pretty much figure out okay how how the fucking story was gonna end. But it's about this basically this demon gets called Mr. Begon gets trapped inside the book you're reading, right? So he talks to you, right? And he re, he re, he tells you his tale, and it gets pretty obvious. Oh, he gets like how he gets trapped in the book, right? You, I even need to fucking finish it. But yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed this film, and uh, though I do not recommend trying to eat while watching the film, because it's, it, it, it's, there's some really gory, gross uh, scenes in the film, <laughs> right, I could, yeah, like my sandwich, uh, I was watching and I couldn't eat my sandwich and it went fucking stale on me, <laughs> right, so yeah, if I were to give this movie a rating, I would say it's a, uh, you know, it's a 7 out of 10. You know, it's a little bit dated by today's standards, but it's still a solid f- flick, and and you could pretty much find find this movie uh, anywhere if you have if you. But I would recommend uh, obviously buying it. It would be great for your uh, horror collection. But you know, if you want to check it out first before uh, buying it, uh, Critical, who who's a horror host on Bitchu. Uh, did this movie right? And you can watch the the movie uh, on his like horror host show on Bitchu, which is amazing, right? And he also has like uh, the he also has a store in Corpus Christi, Texas. If so, if you live in Texas, maybe check out his store. I for, I forget what it's called. It's like I think it's called TNT Video or something like that. Yeah, so check it out. Check that out. So I think we only have one more. Uh, movie to review for uh, Kevin, which is uh, Evil Dead. But first off, 
Uh, we're going to review a, a, an action movie, which is like a superhero indie film called, uh, at, oh, fuck, what was it called? Like, All Superheroes Must Die, which is directed and written by one of my favorite indie filmmakers, Jason Tross, who did the FP, right, which is one of my favorite indie films of, indie comedies of all time. Right, and I just found out recently that he has a YouTube channel where he upload both the sequel to uh, the FP and All Superheroes Must Die. So I, I gotta fucking, I, man, I gotta fucking watch those movies, but I can't fucking find my copy of uh, the FP. But when I when I do find my copy of the FP, we're gonna review this, review it on uh, this channel. All right, guys, peace.